Welcome to Seattle, the fastest growing and northernmost large city in the USA with a metropolitan area population of 3.87 million. Known as the Emerald City and Jet City, Seattle is the home of such innovative companies as Amazon, Microsoft, Boeing, Starbucks, Costco, Nordstrom, Russell Investments, Packar, Expedia, Warehouser, and T-Mobile. A major gateway for trade with Asia, it is also the fourth largest and busiest port in North America. Arthur A. Denny and his group of travelers from Illinois arrived at Alki Point in West Seattle on November 13, 1851. The settlement relocated to the eastern shore of Elliott Bay near what is now Pioneer Square and in 1852 was named Seattle in honor of Chief Seal of the local Duwamish and Suquamish tribes. Native Americans had inhabited the area for at least 4,000 years before the first permanent European settlers arrived. Today, Seattle and King County have significant populations of Native Americans, Asians, Scandinavians, Africans, and Hispanics. Logging was Seattle's first major industry, but by the late 19th century, the city had become a commercial and shipbuilding center during the Alaskan Klondike Gold Rush. As a result of the Gold Rush, Packard, Nordstrom, and Alaska Airlines were born. Nordstrom was founded in 1901 by a Swedish prospector and began as a local shoe and clothing outfitter before it grew into a high-end retailer. Commercial growth after World War II was partially due to the Boeing Company, which established Seattle as a center for military and commercial aircraft manufacturing. In 1969, however, after a decade of rapid growth in air travel, spurred by the introduction of jet transports, the airplane market collapsed during a national recession. The western Washington region experienced a boom from the 1980s onwards, as it developed into a technology center with the establishment of companies like Microsoft, Amazon, Expedia, and over 70 biotech companies. Seattle has a noteworthy musical history. From 1918 to 1951, nearly two dozen jazz nightclubs flourished along Jackson Street. The jazz scene nurtured the early careers of Ray Charles, Quincy Jones, Ernestine Anderson, and other jazz greats breaking their way into the business. Seattle is the birthplace of rock musician Jimi Hendrix, who attended Seattle's Garfield High School. Garfield and Roosevelt Public High Schools are music powerhouses, winning in over a dozen essentially Ellington jazz competitions hosted annually in New York. Seattle is the origin of the bands Heart, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, Foo Fighters. It is also the birthplace of Macklemore and the alternative rock movement known as grunge. Seattle is the home of the University of Washington, founded in 1861 on the site that is now the Fairmont Olympic Hotel. The University of Washington's campus was relocated in 1895 from the Metropolitan Tract in downtown, which it still owns, generating millions of dollars in revenue, to its current site, a beautifully Olmsted landscaped 703-acre spot just north of downtown Seattle, above the Montlake Cut, which connects Lake Washington and Lake Union. Although relatively young, the UW is one of the world's preeminent public universities, with $1.35 billion in sponsored grants and contracts. Since 1972, it has received more federal research funding than any other U.S. public university. Since 1989, seven UW faculty members have won Nobel Prizes. Since 1990, five have won Nobel Prizes in medicine, more than any other institution during that time period. 
There are over 286 specialized research centers at the UW and over 20 NIH research cores and centers of excellence. UW Medicine is the most comprehensive, integrated health system in the Pacific Northwest and ranks among the top academic research institutions in National Institutes of Health funding. The UW School of Medicine is second in the nation in total NIH research grants and contracts, with $749.9 million in revenue in 2016. UW Medicine's care is delivered through the eight entities that make up UW Medicine and through our affiliations with Seattle Children's Hospital, Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center, and VA Puget Sound. The UW School of Medicine educates medical students in five states throughout the regional partnership known as WAMI, which stands for the states served, Washington, Wyoming, Alaska, Montana, and Idaho. Through this partnership, UW medical students have access to a variety of settings for clinical training, from a busy level one trauma center in Seattle, to a small primary care clinic in Libby, Montana, to working with Alaska natives in our northernmost clinic located in Barrow, Alaska. The most recent medical school class consisted of 250 students. Airlift Northwest is dedicated to providing air medical transport for critically ill and injured infants, children and adults, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The region's first and predominant air medical transport service, Airlift Northwest has flown more than 100,000 patients since its founding in 1982 and now transports about 3,000 every year to Seattle. Harborview Medical Center is a comprehensive healthcare facility whose mission is to provide care for a broad spectrum of patients from throughout the region, including the most vulnerable residents of King County. It is owned by King County, governed by the Harborview Board of Trustees, staffed by UW faculty, and, for the last 50 years, managed by UW Medicine. Harborview is the only level one trauma and burn center in the Pacific Northwest, serving both adults and children. There are 413 beds, and the year-long occupancy rate is approximately 105%. It has the highest patient acuity of any academic hospital in the country. Harborview is home to the Cerebrovascular Center, UW Regional Epilepsy Center, Vascular Institute, Eye Institute, and the first Joint Commission Certified Comprehensive Stroke Center in the state of Washington. The Department of Neurological Surgery's main offices are located on the Harborview campus. We have a 30-bed neuro ICU at Harborview and perform mostly microsurgical cerebrovascular surgery, endovascular surgery, epilepsy surgery, elective and traumatic spine surgery, spine deformity surgery, emergency tumor surgery, and adult transitional neurosurgery. We perform approximately 3,500 procedures at Harborview annually, of which 50% are elective and 50% are emergency. UW Medical Center, U.S. News and World Report's number one hospital in Washington State, is a 530-bed hospital. The Department of Neurological Surgery at UWMC has seven faculty, seven faculty laboratories, six ARNPs, and performs 1,200 neurological surgery operations annually. The majority of surgery at UWMC is endoscopic and open skull base surgery, intrinsic brain tumors, minimally invasive spine surgery, and functional neurological surgery. For more than 100 years, Seattle Children's Hospital has been the only freestanding children's hospital in the five-state Whammy region. This 420-bed hospital has nearly 60 pediatric subspecialties, and care is provided regardless of the family's ability to pay. We have four full-time, board-certified pediatric neurological surgeons performing over 800 surgeries annually at Children's Hospital. At the forefront of pediatric medical research, Seattle Children's Research Institute includes our Neurosciences Institute called the Center for Integrative Brain Research, which is run by Professor Nino Ramirez, a neurophysiologist and a neurological surgery faculty member. Two UW Department of Neurological Surgery faculty members are based at the VA and we rotate one resident there every four months to perform spine, general neurosurgery, and peripheral nerve surgery. 
The Fred Hutchinson Cancer Research Center was a vision of two brothers, Dr. William Hutchinson, a Seattle surgeon, and Fred Hutchinson, a baseball hero. The Hutch's groundbreaking discoveries began in the 1970s with Dr. E. Donald Thomas's pioneering work in bone marrow transplantation, which led to him receiving the 1990 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. Hutch researchers have made a number of breakthroughs, including developing new immunotherapies and advancing the understanding of basic cancer biology. Our SNS honored lecturer, Dr. Lee Hartwell, discovered the mechanisms of checkpoint genes that determine whether a cell is dividing normally. For his discoveries, Dr. Hartwell received the 2001 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. To maximize Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center's life-saving impact, investigators partner with UW Medicine and Seattle Children's clinicians and researchers. Together, this team forms the Seattle Cancer Care Alliance. The University of Washington School of Medicine admitted its first class in 1946. Henry Harkins, the first chair of the Department of Surgery, appointed Arthur A. Ward, Jr. to head the Division of Neurosurgery in 1948. The Division of Neurological Surgery achieved department status in 1965. At that time, it was made up of four full-time neurosurgeons and several researchers. The UW Department of Neurological Surgery is currently comprised of 55 faculty members, which includes 19 active academic neurosurgeons and seven professors emeriti. We employ three neurohospitalists, 33 advanced practice providers, six clinical fellows, and host up to 75 visiting scholars annually. The department is home to 18 research faculty and 38 research staff, and 10 and a half full-time administrative staff members who work under the direction of Jana Pettit. The department has five endowed chairs, five endowed professorships, and three endowed lectureships. Our 21 residents are an outstanding, diverse, and busy group. Monday, the beast awakens. It's alive! The day begins early at Harborview, where the post called Junior spent up to an hour organizing all new images from the past 72 hours. It is a mixture of subarachnoid hemorrhages, heads with blood, broken spines, new tumors, new strokes, and very sick patients. At precisely 6 a.m., trauma and spine guru Professor Randall Chestnut greets the group with a joke and a 12-ounce cup of black coffee. A caffeinated resident presents 10 to 15 new consults with films at a breakneck pace, with many clinical management critiques by Chesie. Dr. Chesnut leads the trauma team on ICU rounds, polishing the chief's plans and operative decision-making. Acute care hospital rounds can take another hour for the seven neurosurgical residents and PAs to see between 40 and 80 patients on nine floors and two hospital towers in staccato speed. Later in the main ORs, four rooms will be running everything from crash spines and heads to skull-based tumors, shunts, and aneurysms. Feng Yi Zhang, an operating machine and the busiest surgeon at UW Medicine, has been working all weekend. He is finishing his week of a dozen operations on call getting ready for a seemingly endless list of elective surgeries. Meanwhile, in the angio suite, Dr. Lewis Kim is running two endovascular rooms with militaristic efficiency and trademark, holy Toledo, are you post-call? His deadpan feedback amuses observers and reminds the PGY3 that postgraduate fellowships exist for a reason, as he or she haltingly turns their catheter into a petrified vertebral artery. Such is the organized anarchy for the eight residents, eight faculty, 3,500 operations a year club at Harborview. It is one of a kind. Five miles away in the bucolic suburbs, rounds begin with a tall, non-fat almond milk latte from one of the three Starbucks at Seattle Children's. A PGY three, four, fellow, and two of the eight NPs round with soft voices. They're peeking in at 15 to 20 children, careful not to wake sleeping parents, Dr. Lee has just dropped her kids off at school and beat the always late Dr. Ojiman to her seat between Sam Brown, who just started his sixth company, and the chairman and professor, AKA the best damn intern in the hospital. At 7.45, teaching conference begins with a requisite Ojiman weekend safety story, which Oj dutifully feigns bemused interest, pretending to take notes while he actually draws a cartoon thalamus smoking a cigar. With 800 cases a year, there's an endless array of pathology seen at Seattle Children's. 
At the UWMC, rounds are done by the six residents and one of the six nurse practitioners who are faculty members. The team prepares for about eight cases, including four endoscopic skull-based tumors. By the end of the day, they'll have resected a softball's volume worth of adenoma, meningioma, schwannoma, and the like with Dr. Anouk Patel and Manny Ferreira running rooms. Tuesday, another big operative day at HMC. The usual complement of trauma and spine with Rajiv Saigal gussied up a bit with a Rosa robot guided ablations and a lobectomy by Dr. Ojeman and Dr. Ko. Dr. Shaker likes to stay limber with an extreme lateral in one room and a high flow bypass in another. At UWMC, you can expect to see anatomy guru Dan Silbergeld walking a chief, junior resident, and anesthesiologist through an awake cranny while he dictates answers to the New York Times crossword puzzle to any medical student caught in the room. On the other end of the spectrum, Dr. Christoph Hofstetter vacillates between pioneering endoscopic approaches and reconstructing spines leveled by metastatic disease. The end of the day is reserved for the infamous case conference. It is attended by the seven faculty and three emeritus professors, led by Dr. Ferreira and the R2 who presents all planned elective cases. He or she is subject to a battery of questions ranging from the finer details of the neurologic exam to the most arcane tenets of nociceptive pain physiology, thanks to the encyclopedic knowledge of our emeritus regulars, Drs. John Lozier and George Ogeman. Wednesday, the day the family comes together to eat breakfast and intellectualize. All services start rounds early to make it to grand rounds at HMC at 7 a.m. sharp. No excuses and no prisoners by Dr. Ellen Bogan, who polices residents to the front three rows and ensures they close their max. Juniors attempt to stay conscious between laptop progress notes, absorbing the lecture, and answering pagers. After grand rounds, residents hang tight for another hour of protected, resident-driven academic education. At UWMC, however, this can be the busiest operative day, with adult tumor board reviewing 11 patients while four operating rooms are running most of the day. Five to 10 of the 1,200 annual operations will allow residents exposure to the skull base through the nose with Dr. Patel, through the petrous bone with Dr. Ferreira, and with screws through the arch of C1 with Hoff. Thursday, cases at HMC start an hour later to make room for Harborview Professor Case Conference. Mostly elective complex spine, tumor and vascular cases are reviewed, and the vast distance between even the most advanced chief residents and our wall full of professors is revealed very publicly and occasionally humorously. The army of full professors, RGE, Kim, Shaker, Chesnut, and Zhang bombard juniors, chiefs, and fellows mercilessly preparing them for the battlefields of the oral ABNS exam. Occasionally, even a neuroradiologist casualty is sustained. The rest of the day Thursday and all day Friday are for operating. Multiple elective rooms are running across all institutions with guaranteed trauma, shunt, and tumor add-ons. Saturday and Sunday. Once a month, a cadaver-based anatomical prosection is led by our faculty in conjunction with a visiting professor. This weekend, it's a bypass course with Drs. Levitt, Kim, and Shaker in our 10-station simulation lab. Many residents are fortunate enough to gain additional learning experiences on call. Upwards of 10 cases, dozens of consults, and complex services are enough to keep even our home call residents stimulated. When out of the hospital, a little sunshine can go a long way. We take shelter from Seattle's purportedly terrible weather and get some much-needed physical rest. The unlucky bunch who find themselves with a weekend off manage to pass the time with dexterity exercises and a little R&R. Just censor me out. Yeah.